Welcome to the Section 508 Overview. This webinar is hosted by NTEC and OJJDP. I am Donna Patrick, a Section 508 Specialist, and today I'm here to talk about Section 508. Today we will talk about Section 508. You will learn what Section 508 is, what it covers, both disabilities, and what needs to be made compliant. You'll also learn a little about the history of Section 508 and what happens if your content is not Section 508 compliant. What is Section 508? Section 508 requires that any information and communications technology the federal government creates, buys, maintains, or uses must be accessible for everyone, including people with disabilities. Besides making ICT accessible for disabled federal government employees, the law also includes members of the general public who are disabled. What is ICT? Information and Communications Technology, or ICT for short, is anything that provides access to information through telecommunications. For instance, your computer, your operating system, such as Windows, your smartphone, such as an iPhone, even a copier in your office are examples of ICT. In addition, Information obtained through computers and smartphones is ICT, such as web pages, PDF files, and videos. A brief history of Section 508 starts in 1986, when Section 508 was added as the 508th Amendment to the Rehabilitation Act of 1973. Unfortunately, there was no provision for enforcement in the amendment at that time. Section 508 was amended in 1998 to give it more teeth, and again in 2016 to reflect new technologies. The latest update took effect January 18, 2018. Let's talk about what happens if you don't comply with Section 508. Any individual with a disability can file a complaint or civil action against a federal department or agency if they feel the department or agency has not complied with accessible technology standards. Besides the legal ramifications, if you don't comply with Section 508, you are preventing disabled individuals from obtaining the same information as non-disabled individuals. As mentioned earlier, Section 508 was revised in 2016, and the new standards took effect in January 2018. The web portion of the law now points to version 2.0 of the World Wide Web Consortium Web Content Accessibility Guidelines, or WCAG 2.0 for short. WCAG 2.0 has three levels of conformance. Section 508 requires only levels A and AA, which are easier to implement and help the greatest majority of users. Level AAA is more difficult to implement and affects fewer users than A and AA. A good way to remember WCAG 2.0's four principles is to remember the acronym FOR. ICT must be perceivable, operable, understandable, and robust. When you think about the WCAG 2.0 principle perceivable, it might be helpful to ask, is there anything in our website or in our electronic documents that a blind, deaf, low vision, or colorblind user would not be able to perceive? you need to make sure images are described, videos are captioned, and have audio descriptions. Your tables and forms must also be marked up correctly. When thinking about WCAG 2.0 principle operable, ask, can actionable elements, links, forms, buttons, menus, be accessed and triggered with only a keyboard? Is there a way to request more time or to stop or pause a carousel? Is there flashing content? Is it easy to skip repeated navigation? Is it easy for users to figure out where they are or to move to a different page or location? The WCAG 2.0 principle understandable deals with the comprehension of the website or electronic document. Understandable websites use clear, concise language and offer a functionality that is easy to comprehend. Ask yourself, is the language set? Is the content predictable? Is it easy to correct mistakes on forms? Is all of the text on the website clearly written? Are all of the interactions easy to understand? The robust principle is the most technology-centered principle. 
Users pick their own mix of technologies. Within limits, websites should work well enough across platforms, browsers, and devices to account for personal choices and user needs. Ask yourself, is the markup valid? Are the ID values unique? For instance, for complex table headings. What needs to be compliant? All digital content created, maintained, purchased by the federal government, including websites, web applications, and mobile applications and electronic documents. We will be focusing on electronic documents in these trainings. Who is Section 5OI written for? Following are common disabilities that could be impacted when ICT is not accessible. Visual impairments range from colorblindness to low vision to complete blindness. According to the National Center for Health Statistics, it is estimated that 21 million American adults have some sort of visual loss. Imagine not being able to see a computer screen. How would you use a computer? Blind people use screen readers, which typically announce what is on the screen, but it can also send the information to Braille devices. Blind people also cannot see the action in a video. When it is important and not described in the dialogue narration, they will need it described in a separate audio track. The most common screen reader for users is JAWS. Another popular and free screen reader is NVDA. Apple users have VoiceOver, a program installed on all iOS products, including iPhones and iPads. Android users typically use TalkBack. Imagine not being able to see the action in a movie or video. Sometimes, often, the dialogue is not enough to understand what is happening. That's where audio descriptions come in. They describe what is happening in the video. This is something that can be on a separate audio track or integrated into the audio when there is no dialogue or narration. Individuals with low vision might need to resize the text on a web page or electronic document. The illustration on this slide is a computer-generated simulation of how the OJDDP homepage could look to someone with macular degeneration. They may have difficulty if the contrast is low or if the text cannot be resized. It is relatively easy to determine the contrast ratio of text to background by using an online or downloadable tool. See the WebEx log page to view a list of some color contrast tools. If you cannot distinguish one color from another, it is going to be difficult to follow directions or understand information if the directions only use color to give those directions or convey that information. It is important to provide that information in a different way, such as text. Charts and graphs often use color alone to provide information. For instance, the sales chart on this slide only uses color to display sales for each quarter. Someone who cannot distinguish colors might have trouble telling which quarter is which. One way to fix this is to put the information on the chart. Another way is to include a data table with the information near the image. While the deaf and hard of hearing can typically access ICT with no problem, there are some types of ICT that might prove difficult. These include anything with audio. For instance, podcasts or video with sound, including webinars. Video programs such as YouTube have the ability to add closed captioning. In fact, YouTube adds it automatically. Make sure you check any auto-generated YouTube closed captions to make sure they are correct, or better yet, create it yourself. YouTube has a good tutorial to help you with this. Many webinar software programs include the ability to transcribe the dialogue while the webinar is taking place. This will benefit the deaf and hard of hearing during the webinar and after it is posted online. Transcripts are also helpful, but transcripts are not a substitute for captioning. Podcasts and any other audio-only content need transcripts. A visitor who has limited use of their hands will benefit from being able to use the tab key on their keyboard or other input device, such as the child in the image using a head stick to navigate to links buttons or other controls and trigger them by pressing enter. Finally, here are some resources that provide more information. Please take a few minutes to review the disclaimer here. Thank you for viewing today's training.